Thanks for joining. Today's Masonry Minute is brought to you by the Masonry Institute of Michigan and the Upstate Masonry Institute <clears throat> in New York. And today we're going to be discussing the question, are you over-designing your masonry levels? And to answer that, we're going to use the 2015 Design of Reinforced Masonry Structures, which is published by the Concrete Masonry Association of California and Nevada. And if we look uh, in their loading chapter, so in chapter three of their book, we can see that uh, masonry has an innate ability to arch. And we can see this image from uh, Robert Drysdale's book of a car crashing through a brick wall here. And we can see where it punched through the wall and the wall is forming an arch and self-supporting itself around that opening. And if we read through the language in chapter three, uh, we can see that for arching to occur, there must be sufficient lateral resistance. Oops, let me grab a highlighter here. Sufficient lateral resistance at the ends of the arch to resist that horizontal thrust. And that lateral resistance may be provided by the mass of masonry adjacent to the opening or specifically designing an element to resist the imposed lateral load. And it's important to note that arching cannot occur if the ends of the arch are near wall ends, corners, or control joints, or when masonry units are not laid in running bond. And so if you've listened to our um, movement control presentation here at MIM, you know that we typically recommend moving the control joints off of our openings. And by moving the control joints off of our openings, we can then design for that arching action. And so what are we designing that lintel for? Well, the masonry lintel is assumed to support only the loads within a triangle created by two lines inclined at 45 degrees extending from the span ends. And so we can see that in this gray area here in this image, which comes out of that design of reinforced masonry structures book. And so this lintel will only be designed for the dead weight of the wall within this triangular area and not any of the other superimposed loads. So there's three conditions that could occur. The first is if we have a superimposed load above our arch triangle. So we can see here if we had a roof or a floor load applied above that arch area, there's no effect on that lintel design. If we have the load within the arch, and we call this length a little l here, the length of the load within our arch area, and we call our span length um, capital L, then our load on our lintel will be Q times the ratio of lowercase l to large l, so this length to the length of our lintel. Uh, same for a partial load within an arch triangle, so we can use the concentrated load distribution, so a two to one ratio, and again, come out with a lowercase l, which would be the length of load within our arch, and we would project it down on a two to one slope, and this would be our large lowercase l, which would be the length of that load on our lintel. NCMA also discusses this phenomenon in their design analysis of concrete masonry and precast concrete publication, which is available for free on their website. And they have a similar diagram here below. So that's figure 3.2 arching action where they show that 45 degree uh, line and where it intersects. We're just designing that lintel for the area within that projection. And we have to make sure we have sufficient height above our lintel to develop that arching action. And NCMA's um, design and analysis of CMU and precast concrete lintels tells us that we, our height above that lintel needs to be equal to our effective span divided by two plus eight inches minimum. And so we're going to assume a lintel height We'll come up with our effective span, which our effective span is our clear span, plus half of our bearing on each side of the opening. Divide that by two, add, add eight inches to it, and as long as we have that height above our lintel, we can design that lintel for arching action only. So we can look at this in an example. So this example is out of NCMA's document. They have this wall configuration here with a five foot four wide window opening that's four foot tall and it's three foot four above the base of the structure, 18 foot tall. And we have joists framing into the top of the wall. So let me take a snip of this and open up a whiteboard here so we can look at this example. So if I paste this here. All right, so we have an 18 foot tall wall 
And so what do we know? So our known values, so I'll write over here on the right. So knowns, what's our weight of our wall? Well, we can look that up if we have access to NCMA's tech note 14-13B. We can go down to our 12 inch table. And if we look at our 12 inch wide walls, we can see that if we're reinforced at 48 inches on center, which is probably over reinforced and we have a few lectures on that. But if we come over to a normal weight unit, it's 63 pounds per foot. And we know the weight of our lintel, which will be solid grouted. Uh, we can take reinforcement eight inches on center, which would be 132 pounds um, per square foot. So if I go back in here, so the weight of our wall is going to be 63 PSF. And again, that's for 12 inch normal weight with bars at 48 inches on center. Our weight of our lintel was 132 PSF. And we'll go through this example, but we'll assume it's one course deep if we're able to use arching action. So we'll multiply it by our nominal height, which is eight inches divided by 12. And we can see that our uh, pounds per foot here will come out to 88 pounds per foot. And in the NCMA document, you can look up a one course lintel and I think it's 90 pounds per foot in their document, but this is one course here. All right, so step one, what are we gonna do? Well, we need to figure out if we have enough height above our opening to resist that arching force. And so we'll do a check for arching. Check for arching. So what is our effective span length? Well, from the NCMA document, the effective span length is our clear length plus half our bearing on each side. So we have two bearings because we have one on the right and left side times half of that bearing length. And so if we do this in this example, five foot four is 64 inches. So we have 64 inches plus two times one half times our eight inch bearing. And so our effective span length comes up to 72 inches or six feet. Our height above our opening we'll call big H. So big H equals 18 foot, which is the height of our wall. And we're gonna subtract 40 inches here, which is our three foot four minus 48 inches, which is the height of our opening, which is four foot. And so that comes out to 128 inches. Okay, so now we have to check for our required height, which our required height, I'll call lowercase h required height. Call this lowercase h. And if you remember from the NCMA document, our required height to develop arching action is half of our expected, half of our effective span length, so L over two plus eight inches. So we'd have 72 inches divided by two plus eight inches and that comes out to 44 inches. So if we had a one course lintel in this wall, so it's eight inches deep, we need 44 inches above that, which if it were only one course, indeed we will have that 44 inch minimum. So we will have arching action, um, but as long as our lintel is not greater than this 128 minus our 44, uh, which would be 84 inches deep, we can use arching action. So as long as lintel is not 128 minus 44, 84 inches deep, we can design for arching action. And so we're not gonna design an 84 inch deep lintel obviously, and so we do have arching action. So that's good. That means we can design for much less load. So how much can we design it for? Well, step two, step two here, we'll find our maximum shear and moment. So find BU and MU. And so what do we know? We know the dead weight of our lintel was 88 pounds per foot. What's the dead weight of our wall? Well, up above we had 63 PSF, and if we have that opening and we have that lintel over top of it, and we know our effective span 
length here is 72 inches, which is six feet. We wanna know our large W for the purposes of figuring out moments. And so we'll figure it out right at the vertex of those two lines. So that would be at three foot up. And again, this is three foot here. And so if we have 63 times three foot, we have 189 pounds per foot at the center of our arch. And so what equations do we have? For, so if we wanna solve for our V max, which would be our maximum shear force. If I look back at the lintel design manual, we have shear and moment equations. And so we have a uniform load caused by the load of our lintel. So I'll copy and paste this here for our use. And then we have a linearly increasing load, uh, which is that arching distribution. And they have the equation on the next page here for that. So if I scroll down, we'll take a snip of this A as well. All right, and paste it here. So we can see that for our lintel, which is a uniform load, it would be WL over two, which should be pretty familiar to everyone for a uniform load. For a triangular load, our maximum shear is W times L divided by four. And I do wanna note, since we only have dead load in this case, if we're using strength design, 1.4 dead is going to control by inspection because we don't have any other live loads or anything. So we know that 1.4 dead controls by inspection. So our Vmax, we're gonna have 1.4 times 88 pounds per foot, which is the weight of our lintel times our span, which is six feet divided by two. That'll give us our maximum shear from our lintel uniform load, which is right here. Our maximum shear from our triangular distribution from that arch, we'd have 1.4 times 189 pounds per foot times um, six feet. And we're going to divide that by four instead of by two. And again, that comes right from this triangular load distribution, uh, which is available either in the AISC manual or in the lintel design manual. And if we divide that out, we know our maximum shear then comes out to 766.5 pounds. Maximum moment, so we can do that next. I'm sub U, so again, should be pretty familiar to everyone. Uniform load WL squared divided by eight for a triangular load. M max occurs at the center and it's WL squared divided by 12. So again, we'd have 1.4 times our 88 PLF times six feet squared divided by eight. And that will be the maximum moment from our uniform load from our lintel plus 1.4 times that 189 pounds per foot times six feet squared divided by 12. So M sub U in this case is going to come out to 1,348 foot pounds. And if we multiply that by 12, we get 16,178.4 inch pounds. And so now we have our maximum moments and our maximum shear, and we can either use software or a spreadsheet to calculate our lintel capacity. How about a one course 12 inch lintel? We should have no problem resisting these forces. And so we can design a one course lintel for this arching force. Um, if we look at uh, without arching, so we could tabulate what our dead weights are. So our dead weight of our wall without arching, we have 10 feet of wall above our lintel times 63 PSF. And that comes out to 630 pounds per foot. We have our lintel dead weight, which again was 88 pounds per foot. We have our dead load from our roof, which I'll call D roof. And that was 250 pounds per joist. So if we go back up to our diagram here, we had joists 16 inches on center. And each of them, the problem tells us, has a dead load of 250 and a live load of 500. So 250 pounds, P live, 500 pounds. So if we scroll back down here and we want to turn that into a uniform load, we have 250 pounds times our spacing divided by 12. And that comes out to 187.5 pounds per foot. 
We can do the same thing with our live load, which I'll abbreviate as L sub rough. And that was 500 pounds times our 16 inch spacing divided by 12. And that comes out to 375 pounds per foot. And so since we have dead and live load now, 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live is likely going to control. And so we'd have 1.2 times 630 plus 88 plus 187.5 plus 1.6 times 375. And so our uniform load that's factored W sub U comes out to be 1686.6 pounds per foot. And now since all these are uniform loads acting on our six foot lintel, so this is six foot here. And we have this uniform load here of 1686.6 pounds per foot. We know that our maximum moment M sub U will be WL squared divided by eight. And so if we plug this in, we have 1686.6 pounds per foot times our span six foot squared divided by eight. And our maximum moments would then come out to 7,589.7 foot kips or 91,076.4 inch kips. And so if we compare that 91,000 inch kips with what we had solved for here with arching action, which was 16,000 inch kips, we can see that we get a 600% reduction in moment. I think it's 540%, but a 600% reduction in moments by taking advantage of that arching action. And so if we have a project, we know our control joints are moved off of our openings. We know we have piers next to our openings and we're not near a wall end or a corner. Um, it's really efficient to take advantage of that arching action philosophy and design our lintels for the moment and shear resulting from this inherent arching action in our wall. In a later video, we'll go through how to actually design a lintel, uh, but thank you for joining today. I really appreciate it and reach out with any questions. Thank you.